Today, March 10th, 2019, makes five years since my last drink. Alcoholic drink. Good morning! So in this week's video, it's going to be a little bit different than my usual. I've decided to share my sobriety story. So someone reached out to me recently, Craig, hi Craig, and wanted to know if I would share my story because he works with women who are dealing with substance abuse and addiction at a place called the Harton House and thought that maybe my story would be inspiring. So, where today is actually my celebration of five years, that was ten, five years, since my last drink, I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to share. So, I'm gonna try to do like the quick version of the story. I'm 30 years old and there has been a lot that has happened in my 30 years that relate to drinking, uh, but I'm gonna try to keep it short if there's, you know, a lot of interest then maybe I could share more in the future but let's see I've been pretty open to this point about the fact that I am sober but I haven't really shared anything about my story so I'll be honest with you I feel a little bit vulnerable at this moment <laughs> so where do I begin um, I think that there's a lot of reasons that people become addicted to alcohol or drugs and I think I was one of those cases where I was just destined to be. Ever since I was little, as far back as I can remember, I could not wait to be old enough to drink. I completely like romanticized alcohol. My favorite example I like to share about that is when I was little, I used to take my mom's empty Corona bottles and I would fill them with ginger ale because it was the same color as Corona, and put a wedge of lime in it and walk around drinking it, and I just thought I was the coolest thing. I was probably like eight or 10, I don't even know. So, yes, as far back as I can remember, I couldn't wait to be old enough to drink. Once I got to that like eighth, ninth grade age, that's when my drinking really began and began to take off. In high school, like, my life revolved around drinking. I was either drinking or finding a way to obtain alcohol as a minor. That was all I cared about. Although, I really was, like, a high-functioning alcoholic right from the beginning. I was managing to keep up really good grades. I was on varsity cheerleading. I think most people in my life didn't really know that I had such a problem. It did spill out from time to time. I got in trouble sometimes. Like my junior year, St. Patrick's Day, I got trashed before school and brought alcohol into school and continued drinking. And shortly after, got taken out in handcuffs and arrested. Um, so it, it was affecting my life a little bit, but for the most part, I kept my shit together. After high school, I moved to Hawaii, so I did a year of college and then a year of cosmetology school, and that was probably when I was at my absolute worst for drinking. I barely remember anything that happened in those two years. I was constantly drunk and making really bad decisions. I feel so lucky that nothing worse happened to me. Bad things definitely happened, but I am alive and well today, so it definitely could have been worse. I totaled a car one time, a Mustang, I loved that car, um, I don't know. That's more stories for another day, I think. Anyways, once I turned 21, a week after my 21st birthday, that's when I got my first DUI. And that sucked. I lost my license for like a year, there was a, a whole bunch of repercussions for that, but it never in a million years would have propelled me to quit drinking. I don't think that thought ever would have crossed my mind. But I happened to be working in a salon at the time where my boss was very involved in our personal lives. And although my drinking wasn't really affecting my work, I always showed up early, I was very reliable. 
um, he was very aware of what was going on outside of work and recognized that I had a problem and gave me an ultimatum. I had to quit drinking for six months or I lost my job. And I was devastated. I never imagined my life without alcohol in a million years. I cried and cried and cried over that, but I really loved that job and I just didn't want to lose it, especially for that reason. I think it was sort of a pride thing. Like, okay, fine, I'll do it and I'll show you that I can do it because I don't have a problem. So anyways, I made the decision to quit drinking for that six months. Um, and during that six months, things got pretty good, actually. I started to actually enjoy Hawaii, like, during the daytime, sober, and, like, everything that that island has to offer. And I really started, like, appreciating my life out there. I was also in a relationship at the time that was insanely chaotic and unhealthy prior to quitting drinking, and things had really calmed down after quitting. So after the six months were up, I decided to stick with it. I think looking back, another reason though for that was sort of a pride thing or a control thing. Like I didn't quit drinking because you made me, you know, or maybe I did, but you made me do it for six months, but I really like this lifestyle because I'm in control of, I don't know. So anyways, I continued being sober after that for a while. So about another year went by, so I had been sober for about a year and a half, and I ended up moving back home for a time, and just things in my life were different, and I decided to go back to drinking. I really, really believed that because I had quit for a year and a half, and a year of that was completely my own decision, that that meant I didn't have a problem, and that I could go back to it in a more responsible way. That's what I kept telling myself anyways, although I think deep down I was really excited to just like get drunk and party again so it I don't really consider it like a relapse so much as it was like a very thought-out conscious decision to go back to drinking and I did and it did sort of spiral out of control very quickly again a bunch of chaos happened so I don't know a couple years after I started drinking again I got my second DUI and that one was hell. I lost my license for two years. I had to have a breathalyzer in my car for two years after that, which I could do a whole nother video on that fucking breathalyzer. That was hell. Anyway, that didn't convince me to quit drinking. Um, the second DUI, I continued after that. And honestly, I think my mindset was like, Hell yeah, now I can party and I can't drive, so people have to drive me around. Um, it almost felt like it enabled my partying a little bit more, so I did continue drinking. I was court mandated to go to a bunch of AA meetings and classes and stuff like that, and there was one meeting, AA meeting, that sort of sticks out to me as being like a catalyst for my quitting drinking. Didn't cause me to quit drinking at the time, but it really stuck with me. I really liked going to like speaker discussion meetings where someone shared their story. And there was this one woman who shared her story who was mid 50s, had a family, a soccer mom type, like not like the stereotypical type you would see at AA. And she shared her story about how she had gotten two DUIs when she was really young, like barely drinking age, and then just sort of skated through life, never getting in trouble again. Probably lived a pretty normal life. And then in her, you know, at this age, mid 50s, she ended up getting a third DUI. And a third DUI is a felony. She went to jail for a while, and then at this time that she was speaking, she was living in a sober house, and she had kids at home, and it was like, just really struck me like I, like I related to this woman. I think most of the time at AA, I never really felt like I belonged there or related to these people. Um, but this woman, I could sort of see myself as her. I had gotten two DUIs when I was pretty young. I could skate through life for a while, probably without getting in trouble, but if I continued to drink, 
I would eventually get a third DUI and go to freaking jail and be a felon. Like that was mind boggling to me. So like I said, that didn't like cause me to quit drinking at that moment, but it really like stuck with me and I thought about it a lot. A months after that, so a little more than a year after my DUI, I went on vacation with my dad, one of my brothers and Luke. And I think we were in Mexico or St. Martin, I forget. And I was hammered that whole vacation. Like there was no point in going there and spending the money if I was just gonna be blacked out the whole time. I, the only bits of it that I remember, I was just hung over and felt like shit anyway. So it was stupid. But during that vacation, Luke and I, I guess, got into a little argument one night and woke up the next morning and he had a black eye. And that was like, a wake up call for me. I'm not an abusive type and I just kept thinking about him going home and seeing his family and what if he still had this black eye and I was just like distraught over it. So I, they, he didn't have a black eye when he got home and I don't think his family knew, although now, hi guys, they're gonna know from this video. But anyways, got home and March 10th, five years ago, whatever year that was, the day I got home, that was, the day that I quit drinking. After I quit drinking, it was different the second time around. It was 100% my decision, and also the first time around, I think I always wondered if I could go back to it. Um, this time around, it's been different because I know what will happen if I go back to it, so it felt like a, a permanent decision the second time. It was hard at first. Luke didn't quit drinking, so I was sort of on my own, and I'm not a very social person, so I didn't really know what to do with myself. I didn't want to be around people or talk to anybody, and I just sort of threw myself into work, and that was all that I had. The next winter, I ended up going snowboarding for the first time, which to me was random. I'd lived in New England most of my life and never been, but I think in hindsight now I realize like I was bored, I had too much time on my hands, something was missing, I needed to, I don't know, do something, explore, adventure, like I needed some things to fulfill my life. And so I tried snowboarding and really loved it. The next summer, I ended up going skydiving for the first time, which was something that Luke had always wanted to do. Um, so we went for his birthday and I did a tandem jump with him and, or not with him, with an instructor, um, but we both went. And that was like a life-changing experience for me. I immediately was obsessed. I loved it so much. I didn't know what it was that I loved about it, but it was like the best thing that I had ever done in my entire life. So I ended up going back two weeks later to the same place and doing another tandem jump because I sort of had decided, okay, I want to make this my entire life now and get licensed and all this shit. So maybe I should do one more tandem jump and sort of have that mentality when jumping out of the plane, like could I actually do this by myself? And loved it even more the second time. So that was sort of towards the end of the season. The following season, when it started back up in the spring, I went through the whole process of getting licensed and doing all my student jumps. It became like an obsessive kind of hobby of mine for that time and I I think it was like a serious like substitute for drinking. One of the major things that I could come up with that related was like I'm a very stressed out, anxious type A personality. So drinking always sort of allowed me to let go of the stressors in my life and relax and enjoy myself. And without that, I just became like crazy anxiety all the time. And so then when I started skydiving, I was so scared <laughs> when I was there, like especially as a student learning to jump out of a plane and it just made it so nothing else in my life mattered. Like all the small stuff just seemed so trivial and I like didn't think about anything other than in the moment what I was doing and I was so focused on that. It just was like an escape in a way. So yeah, I kind of, I guess, sort of substituted one addiction for another. But anyways, started getting into these hobbies. I also got into um, circus art. So that now looking back was like me getting back to the person that I was before I started drinking. I used to be really into gymnastics when I was a kid and then just got away from like my athletic self 
And so now all of a sudden I was coming back to circus arts, hand balancing, aerial silks, like these things that I just felt really passionate about and made me feel good. So all these hobbies started happening and it wasn't like a conscious decision at the time, like, oh, I'm sober and I need to do something else, but it just sort of looking back, like that's how it happened. Probably the next year after I got my skydiving license is when I went on my first like couple of real hikes. I'd been on a few smaller ones in the past, but didn't really know anything about hiking. So sort of fell in with someone who took me on a hike. I went, um, Mount Washington was my first real hike and I was gonna say I loved that, but I, I didn't, I didn't. Hiking, I have a different passion for. Like, when I'm doing it, I don't really love it. It's a lot of work, but it's that feeling of like having a goal and accomplishing something I sort of am addicted to. So in New Hampshire, we have like the 48, 4,000 footers. I started checking some of those off my list and I really like just got into the hiking thing. During that time is when I learned of the AT, I think, for the first time and had never heard of it before. So immediately started researching it, like, holy shit, people like hike this whole trail for six months. How is that even possible? Who can do that? Like, and then I was like, you know, I need to know if I can do that. I sort of, I think through skydiving and everything else, started feeling like I could do anything that I wanted. And so even though I had no experience with backpacking or whatever, I was just like, I can do this. So I became obsessed with that, researching, buying gear, hiking a lot. I was fucking hellbent that I was doing it and I went down and did it. So I didn't really give a whole lot of thought about how I was going to end this or wrap it up, but I just, um, I guess my message is that I am so, so grateful for the life that I live now. And I owe it all to not drinking. I mean, like I said, it wasn't conscious things that I decided to do because of not drinking, but looking back, all of these things happened because I am sober. I didn't even mention my business, so I had always wanted to own my own salon. I opened my own business, and all of these things just started falling together after I quit drinking. It wasn't immediate. You know, most people, once you quit drinking, like, your life is kind of in shambles. It definitely takes some time to, like, put everything back together. And so it's not immediate. You need to give it time. But, like, life, my life has gotten so, so much better in my sobriety. And I can't imagine ever, ever, ever giving that up. I could not live this lifestyle that I live now if I were still drinking. I have more energy, I have more money, <laughs> I have more motivation, I'm happier, I just, I just am so, so, so lucky. So the point of this video isn't to convince people to quit drinking. I mean, I know that's unrealistic and it's such a huge part of our society and our culture and that this isn't gonna resonate with a lot of people. There was no talking me into it. But I guess what I'm hoping to get across is if, if you are wanting to quit, stick with it. It takes some time, but life really truly gets so much better and there is so much stuff to do in this world. Like, like I don't even know, now that I'm done the ET, I don't even know what I want to do next because I have so many things that I want to do, places I want to travel to. I want to get into rock climbing. There's, there's so many things that I am almost paralyzed at the moment. Like, what direction do I go in next? But that's how I feel. I feel excited about life all the time. So, yeah. That is my story. I also want to mention, I poor Luke gets the shaft sometimes. Luke quit drinking a year and, and like four months ago now. So he's doing amazing. He's loving his life now too. And he could not be told what to do. There was no way in hell I could ever convince that kid to quit drinking. He didn't see himself as having a problem, but he decided on his own one day too and we are in such a good place now. I feel so lucky to like have a partner in this with me. So, congratulations to Luke on almost a year and a half. Congratulations to me on five years. And I feel like I'm not supposed to say I'm gonna do this forever because one day at a time, right? But I'm fucking doing this forever, definitely. So. 
if any of you have any questions about anything i'm you know i'm a pretty open book and willing to share anything about my story um or i would love to hear your stories of your sobriety or anything related thank you guys for watching and i will see you on the next video which will hopefully be more entertaining than me just talking to the camera